Hello and welcome to the Alliance for Democracy's The Populist Dialogues. Our program promotes progressive, populist perspectives on the issues of the day. The Alliance for Democracy is dedicated to ending corporate domination and creating a just society based on an equitable, sustainable economy. Our guest today is Julia DeGraw, Northwest Senior Organizer for Food and Water Watch. Food and Water Watch fights to protect our water and food from harm by big ag, big gas and oil, and big water through grassroots organizing and advocacy. So I am very glad to have Julia on again. She was our guest last week, so we're going to continue that conversation. So uh, welcome to the show again. Thank you, David. Yeah, yeah. So what well, we didn't get to talk about uh, at the, on the, on the uh, show last week, which was our objective, was, of course, about uh, Nestle. Mm -hmm. And uh, so talk about Nestle as a company and why uh, Nestle seems to get singled out mm -hmm. uh, for special attention. Well, so Food and Water Watch uh, spe specifically targets uh, Nestle for their water bottling practices. Um, and obviously they're not the only company in the bottled water industry. Uh, Coke and Pepsi are uh, the two uh, other largest water bottlers. Um, but Nestle has a particularly nasty track record um, where, where most water bottling companies at this point, especially Pepsi and Coke, will come into municipalities um, and, and, and bottle the, the people's drinking water. They'll like just be a, a regular consumer. Uh, we've got uh, both Coke and Pepsi bottle their soda and water in the Portland area. One of them mm -hmm. bottle, uh, actually bottle water from the Willamette River, which I think is fascinating. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. a, the Pepsi plant is, a, is based in, uh, um, in Wilsonville, so uh, and the other one is is Coke, I believe bottles uh, water from from Portland. Um, so here they're just consumers um, that are purchasing water from from the system. It's very very hard uh, to fight those kinds of operations, especially once they're already uh, set up. Nestle, however, is one of the last corporations that's willing to go off the beat, go off the beaten path and approach rural communities that usually have been hit with difficult economic times. Um, and, and approach these communities that have spring water resources um, so that they can bottle the spring water for a premium. Uh, Nestle likes to uh, bottle spring water in the western region under the Arrowhead brand. Mm -hmm. So Arrowhead is actually technically a Nestle company. Um, and they charge a premium for that water. So it's, that's how it's economically beneficial to them to open up shop further away from the markets, right, off the beaten path in these small communities. Um, and they also bottle those towns' municipal water resources for their um, Pure Life brand, which is their tap water brand. So, uh, and that's their, their value brand. Uh, oh. And uh, so here in the Northwest, interestingly, Nestle has no water bottling facilities. They've never managed to open up shop in Oregon, Washington, Idaho, Montana, anywhere in the region. Hmm. Um, they do have a water bottling facility um, in Canada and a bunch of water bottling facilities in California. Mm -hmm. um, did they, I, I know that they were trying to build one around Ma Mount Shasta, did that happen or were they uh, kicked out of there? They, um, th there's a number of water bottling facilities around the Mount Shasta area and I believe uh, it, w the McLeod uh, yeah. is the area where, where Nestle was uh, trying to open up shop back in 2008, uh, I think was when um, they walked away from that deal, but the, the I recently learned um, that they are back back at it. So oh, so mm. the McLeod fight is, is alive and well again. Um, not it's not well. well. <laughs> it's bad. It's back. It's back. Um, but there's a there's there's a number of communities um, in the Mount Shasta area that are fighting water bottling proposals, including a Nestle water bottling proposal mm. in, in in McLeod. So um, what's what's really happening is. Uh, Nestle is under fire for uh, illegal water bottling without a permit down in San Bernardino National Forest. Um, and also throughout the Southwest, their water sources are, you know, are drying up. And so they're looking to expand further north. Mm -hmm. um, and, and here in the Northwest, they really uh, honed in on uh, the Columbia River Gorge because um, it's fairly close to the I-5 corridor and um, the gorge is known for its springs. I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot of water in the Just, gorge. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's so many waterfalls, we don't even name them all, you know. So, 
uh, Nestle has been trying to open up a bottling facility somewhere along the Columbia River Gorge um, at this point in time for, for nine years, going on nine years. All right, so we, we so talk about the process that they have gone through to, uh, so they, they, they have identified Cascade Locks as to, as to the location where they want to build the plant. So what, what, what have they promised to Cascade Locks? So I, I, to even give like the, the, the full background, when right before Nestle approached Cascade Locks, they also approached um, the town of Enumclaw, Washington, which is a lot further north. It's closer to Seattle. Um, and I think this is a really prime example of how to win these campaigns. In Enumclaw, um, the community found out that Nessie was going to be making a presentation to their city council um, and got so upset and concerned about Nestle coming into their community to bottle their water that they um, started calling their city council members and their mayor and said, please don't even listen to Nessie's presentation. The last thing we need is a mega corporation coming in here and bottling our water and ultimately that city council wouldn't even agree to let Nestle make a presentation. Oh, mm -hmm. So that's 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 the the fairy tale story uh, yeah, the, yeah. But what, what happened in Cascade Locks was was something quite different. Um, the city administrator at the time um, really viewed Nestle as a, a, a step in the right direction in terms of, of job creation. And that's what Nestle does. You know, they come into these communities uh, in Cascade Locks. They used to be a logging community. Um, and since the decline of the logging industry, they really haven't recovered yet. Um, and so Nestle kind of preys on those communities that are very uh, interested in developing more jobs. And, um, and that's what Nestle did. They came to that community in Cascade Locks and promised jobs. And, um, and and, and, the, and we, we ended up with a city leadership that was very pro Nestle. Um, and by the time uh, citizens kind of were aware of it and knew what was going on, uh, the city leadership had pretty much already made up its mind that it was pro Nestle, which makes it really hard mm -hmm. to fight these uh, proposals when you have a leadership that's, that's, that's in line. And this was um, under Governor Kulongoski. That's how long we've been at this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. That's three governors ago. Um, and, uh, and in this particular case in Cascade Locks, it's, it was never just a city level decision. If it was just a city level decision, Nestle would be bottling water right now okay. as we speak. But um, Nestle wants to bottle spring water um, in Cascade Locks that is used by the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife for a fish hatchery. Yeah. So why, why did they not use or want to use Cascade's water itself? They do. They want to bottle the, the town's municipal water under its Pure Life brand, uh. but the Pure Life brand is less profitable. It's tap water. It's mm -hmm. it's it's not that there, there's a value added um, uh, as far as marketing is concerned for spring water. Mm -hmm. um, and so they only want to open up shop in Cascade Locks if they can bottle spring water. Uh. And the the spring water they want to bottle is used by a state agency for a fish hatchery. Um, so that made it a state level process that had to happen in order to make that water available to Nestle for bottling. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what made the Cascade Locks uh, situation unique. I mean, never really before have, uh, has a state been, ha has anyone been able to organize a statewide campaign against a single water bottling facility? Uh -huh. But that's what ended up happening. Mm -hmm. um, starting about nine years ago, a coalition of groups, including uh, Sierra Club and Bark, which is a forest uh, watchdog group that um, is protecting Mount Hood National Forest. Mm -hmm. They view this as a, um, a Mount Hood National Forest issue. The whole thing would conspire just yards away from the National Forest boundary. Uh -huh. It's ultimately water that's from Hood, right, Mount Hood. Um, so uh, because there was a, a state level process and the Water Resources Department um, is actually tasked with uh, uh, with uh, with processing a water exchange application that would make this water available to Nestle. Um, it really gave us a unique opportunity to to organize statewide and see what the public opinion was mm -hmm. on whether or not Nestle should open up a bottling facility in the Columbia River Gorge. And overwhelmingly, the public opinion is that. Oregon absolutely should not open up a water bottling oh. facility in the Columbia River Gorge, especially um, with a state agency essentially cutting a deal and becoming a de facto partner with a multinational corporation with a really nasty track record. You know, mm -hmm. if you look at what Nestle has done 
um, with its water bottling practices. I mentioned earlier that they bottle water illegally in San Bernardino, California, off of um, uh, federal forest land. Um, they also uh, have been known to pump water during droughts into Costa County, Michigan. People's wells went dry, and there was fish die-offs, and Nestle kept pumping. You know, mm -hmm. they claimed that their pumping was having no impact on the water levels. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, uh, you know, they blamed they blamed beaver dams. It was like you know anything but them. Uh, and 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 similar things have happened in in uh, in Maine, where when there were water shortages, Nestle gets theirs first before anyone else. Mm -hmm. um, so they have a really nasty track record in these in these communities. And once they open up shop, it's very hard. Um, in in Macosta County, Michigan, again, it took ten years of litigation. Um, just to limit what Nestle was allowed to pump. Um, I, I would I would assume that after a plant has been established and open and operating, to go back and limit it or try to um, close it down entirely would run up against uh, free trade agreements language. And it's just it's impossible on so many levels to to, yeah. to, to, to shut down these these facilities before they open up. But like leading up to the construction of these facilities, there's always permitting, um, and and lots of steps that you can fight. Um, and ultimately, it's usually political. I mean, ultimately, it's city councils or county officials that have to say yes or no. Um, and, and I think citizens are starting to get really smart about realizing that um, they can run for city council. They can like yeah. that they can mm -hmm. get themselves into these offices. Um, and and I think, in in the case of Cascade Locks, um, um, under Governor Brown, um, uh, Nestle approached uh, the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife and suggested a new idea about how to make the state held water resources available uh, for their water bottling purposes. Um, and it was a permanent water rights exchange. Um, which is something that the state agency had sworn they would never do. They didn't want to give up the permanent um, access to even a portion of their water right. Uh -huh. But now all of a sudden, they were the, the state seemed willing to, to go down that path. Um, and, and, and that's what really was a wake-up call to the citizens of Cascade Locks that, <coughs> that um, and, and the citizens of the Gorge, who are really nervous about having Nestle open up shop you know, mm -hmm. in the middle of the scenic area, right? Um, and that's what really fired up the community, I think, to get more involved. Um, and also a lot of the tribes, um, Warm Springs, um, uh, Umatilla, and Yakima tribes all sent letters uh, to the governor or to the city of Cascade Locks saying that they absolutely would not support a water rights swap. Mm -hmm. And um, ultimately that led to the governor taking an action on that specific proposal after the tribes took action and there was strong opposition um, she got the state to walk away from the water exchange, the water rights swap. But the bottom line was, at that point, there was a group of citizens that started in Cascade Locks and expanded into Hood River County who had decided that the state didn't have their back, because clearly the state did not have their back, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, and decided to, to run a ballot measure campaign. Mm -hmm. um, and that's how we ended up, um, a little over a year ago, um, running um, the Hood River uh, County water protection measure right. um, that effectively outlaws commercial water bottling throughout the entire county. Um, and this is one of the more, more conservative counties in, mm -hmm. in the state. Um, lot, a lot of Republicans and, uh, and independent voters. And ultimately, that uh, ballot measure ended up passing in May of 2016 with uh, uh, almost 68% of the vote. Oh, excellent. So, uh, so it really showed that, uh, and that's the other thing too, like on, on paper, Nestle just wants to bottle what appears to be not a huge amount of water by, you know, a lot of people's standards. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, you know I, I would say that hundreds of millions of gallons of water per year is not a small amount of water out of a small resource too, mm -hmm. like one small spring, that's a large amount of water. But um, Nestle doesn't stop at just one source. Once they open up a bottling facility um, in Maine, in Denver, in, uh, in almost every location where Nestle has a water bottling facility, they truck water from up to 100 miles away um, from various spring sources to bottle it at that facility. Oh. So this concept um, that people had developed that this was just a local decision for Cascade Locks to make for itself um, was always a false premise. Because mm -hmm. first of all, it was state water resources, which all of us own. Every single Oregonian owns that water. But second of all, um, 
Nestle is going to seek water resources from throughout, throughout the gorge, including Washington um, and further east, where water resources are increasingly scarce. And the farmers and orchardists, who are generally very conservative in Hood River County, did not want to have to compete with a multinational corporation for their limited water resources. Mm -hmm. And they spoke loud and clear on election yeah. day. So, so they approved this by 68 percent? Just under 68 percent. I forget close, the exact percentage, but very uh, close. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, and, and so I, I, I would find it hard to believe that Nestle just said okay. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was Nestle's reaction to this passage? I mean, I think they actually said the uh, their, their, their spokesperson, uh, I, I think, said the words that they respect the will of voters, um, <laughs> but that didn't, but they certainly didn't preclude uh, legally challenging the ballot measure. Um, but furthermore, what, what did happen was that the city of Cascade Locks uh, made it clear that they did not accept the, the, the result of that vote. The leadership of Cascade, the city council members of Cascade Locks um, doubted whether or not the, the, the county charter amendment would even um, apply to them. Um, so the city made it clear that they were not going to let it stand. But that said, oh. they've taken no legal action as of yet. Um, and, uh, and throughout this entire process, um, there's a there's still a state level water exchange application that has to be processed by the Water Resources Department before Nestle can even try to open up shop. The state has to approve a water exchange to make this water available to Nestle. Mm -hmm. um, and what appears to be the case, um, and I only have this information because I, 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 I was notified of a, an agenda item um, at the um, Cascade Lock City Council meeting earlier this month, actually. Um, where they approved in their budget $33,000 for um, legal fees, uh, or for, for legal, uh, to cover uh, attorney fees to um, defend the water exchange application. Because oh. the way that process works is, um, say the Water Resources Department preliminary, preliminarily decides to approve the water exchange. The public then has 30 days to protest that decision. And a protest of that decision starts uh, a contested case hearing process in which you actually go to court um, uh, to, to fight, you know, to basically fight that decision. So we, uh, Food and Water Watch and BARC, uh, have agreed to be represented by Craig Law Center to fight uh, uh, any preliminary determination to approve that water exchange application. Mm -hmm. And what the city is doing is the city will file um, uh, to intervene and and de and defend the water exchange application, so that what that tells us is that the city um, is so confident in their ability to overturn the water uh, the ballot measure mm -hmm. that they're willing to go to fight over the water exchange first. So I don't know how far out we are from any legal challenge of the water uh, the Hood River water protection measure, um, but I can tell you this that it was written. To be defended, we knew mm -hmm. that we were taking on a multinational corporation. Yeah, uh, you know the local water alliance that ran that ballot measure campaign knew what they were up against, and, and the attorneys and, and experts that, that 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 they all worked with to draft this um, this charter amendment to the county charter um, to make water bottling illegal in Hood River County was written in such a way to be defended in court. Mm -hmm. So um, it'll be. If they wait until the water exchange application is fully processed, we're up to two or three years away from even seeing what happens with that. And a lot can happen in that amount of time. There's a lot of elections between now and then, um, and, and who knows what the city council will look like in Cascade Locks at that mm -hmm. point. Um, but I can say um, it looks highly unlikely that, that Nestle is going to be able to open up shop in, in, in Cascade Locks. Um, which is which is pretty exciting. Yeah, uh, yes, and, and it's really exciting that you know the the folks in, in Hood River County brought this initiative, uh, and it was and, and it was approved because it, it's not very often uh, that counties or, or or any level of government says you can, you just can't do this. Mm -hmm. You know, this yeah. is this is this is phenomenal, and and, and of course there's this whole. Uh, community rights movement that started in, in Pennsylvania mm -hmm. where the farmers there uh, were saying no you can't establish these factory hog farms mm -hmm. in this in this area and, uh, it, and and of course that's also gone into the, some of the fracking mm -hmm. uh, uh, communities have said no you just cannot frack yep 
in our community. And some of those communities have been, I mean, I remember in, in, in Colorado, one of the communities that we supported who passed a fracking ban got sued by the governor, you know? I mean, like, it oh, is yeah. amazing how hard um, the industry and the industry uh, influenced decision makers, our elected officials, will fight to, to stop communities from standing up for themselves. Mm -hmm. But uh, what's been so incredible in, in the gorge is that uh, this precedent that was set, this historic ballot measure that was passed, really showed, especially, it showed the world. I mean, this got international coverage. I mean, that, that ballot measure, uh, the Guardian broke a story, you mm -hmm. know, and they're based in, in England, right? Yeah, you know, and, and it just, and, and that, and it was, it was a huge deal. That was a major blow against Nestle and the industry. And it really showed the power of people. And um, what's so incredible is, is, is Nestle realized that it might be game over for Cascade Locks, you know, in terms of being able to open up shop there, although mm -hmm. it's still trying. That's, the fight is still continuing. Um, and it was also very disappointing real quickly to backtrack to see Governor Brown not respect the will of voters. She had she had this moment um, when Hood River County passed that ballot measure to tell the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife to pull out of the water exchange process entirely to say, you know what, you know, let's respect the will of voters and, and let's not get into the bottled water industry. Mm -hmm. um, but she still has her, you know, her staff are still saying things like this is a local decision. Oh. And that's just very confusing when oh, yeah. a like like local, local ballot measure oh, yeah, yeah. passes <laughs> it's like it's just a, the, you know it's a very challenging it, it's hard to understand wh where where that where that perspe perspective is coming from but that was a huge missed opportunity as far as i can tell for yeah. the governor to actually um, really take a lead on this yeah um, but well, she'll be she'll be up for election soon this is a so. true fact it's a true fact <laughs> right. uh, and uh, but what happened is like the the the, the, this was not lost on the communities throughout the gorge. And, and Nestle, uh, the next community that Nestle approached um, was Waitsburg, Washington, um, which is way far out eastern, the eastern part of the gorge, um, in a very dry part of the state. Um, and Nestle approached Waitsburg, um, had a bunch of uh, their representatives, uh, had a bunch of secret meetings with the mayor. And this is all well documented. If you Google it, you can find these, these newspaper articles. Um, and eventually the mayor, you know, decided, you know what, I think you really need to come make a presentation to city council before we move further in, in deciding whether or not to have you come out, invite yeah. you to the city to, to, to bottle our water. Um, and as soon as uh, the citizens found out that, uh, A, that Nestle was interested in coming into town, and B, found out that they'd been meeting secretly with their mayor, um, were completely up in arms. I mean, there was a huge backlash from the citizens and even from other members of the city council about that process, about the fact that Nestle was secretly meeting with the mayor. And at the end of that whole debacle, um, the city council decided to walk away entirely from any Nestle deal. Um, and the city, uh, uh, the mayor, um, had taken such a hit from this uh, that he ended up resigning. He was forced to oh. resign from his position. Mm -hmm. So uh, so in Waitsburg, that th th those citizens saw what happened in Cascade Locks um, and heard about Nestle's track record and had decided that they did not uh, trust the company, especially given that it had secretly been meeting with their mayor for, yeah, for right, weeks. Right. Uh -huh. So um, and then the next community after that that Nestle approached was um, Goldendale, Washington, um, a little bit uh, more central in the gorge, um, not quite as far east as Waitsburg, um, but further east than than, um, than even Hood River, um, but on the Washington side. And uh, a, a reporter broke the story that Nestle was on the agenda. It, we had two weeks notice, not, I mean, the community had two weeks notice that Nestle, um, uh, the, the city council was gonna be considering whether or not to send a letter of invitation to Nestle. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And over 200 citizens showed up to that meeting. They had to move it to a church. Uh -huh. um, to and, the, 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 and these are both really small rural communities. Waitsburg is tiny. Cascade Locks is about a thousand people, yeah. mm -hmm. but Goldendale's 6,000 people. It's oh, a little it really? bit larger. Goldendale's oh, oh. A, a larger city mm -hmm. um, for, the, for the region. Um, so it's, it's, still, it's still small though. It's still small. It's, it's still definitely small. definitely still small. Getting right. 250 people uh, with two weeks notice into a room. Two, that, 250 people in Portland would be impressive. Yeah. 
Live without alone. a lot of work. I mean, there was no, I yep. mean, you know, I, the, the opposition loves to claim that, you know, it was this coordinated out effort from outside people, but it's like that was the, the local citizens got fired up mm -hmm. and showed up is what happened. And, um, uh, and the testimony was incredible. 35 people ended up speaking and the majority of them were against the Nestle bottling facility. And it was really impressive to hear uh, at least one person came up and testified and said that uh, they'd come to this meeting in support of Nestle and now they weren't so sure. Oh, yeah. You mm -hmm. know, people were yeah. moved by the testimony. Yeah. Um, and that was seven months ago. Yeah. So we, we have a minute. So yes. what, what, what happened in, in, in Golden Deal? I apologize. Because it's the, yeah. like I, get, I get caught up in the story. <laughs> That's all right. But I've been in, that was seven months ago. And basically what ended up happening is, 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 is citizens found out that uh, the, 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 the city was getting ready to make a decision. Um, and it was really hard for them to get the details of whether or not the city was going to invite Nestle into town. So um, a, a local group was launched. Uh, uh, called, uh, oh goodness, the Goldendale Water Alliance. Um, and uh, they did a public records request and they published an op-ed a week before this vote was going to happen. And before the city council actually had their meeting, the mayor published his report that said that he recommends no further action oh, on Nestle. Oh, excellent. Because excellent. Uh, they didn't want to have to deal with another long drawn out fight like mm -hmm. they saw in Cascade Locks. Right. So it really goes to show that, I mean, this is, it's going to be very hard at this point for Nestle to approach any community in the gorge, and I think honestly any community in the Northwest, mm -hmm. and, and not get kicked out because these city uh, managers and leaders do not want to deal with the the fallout of, of upset citizenry. So we, yeah. we really set a standard on how to keep Nestle out of the Northwest, which is exciting. Great. Wonderful ending for a program mm -hmm. to have clear examples of people power. Thank you. Right. Thank you. All right. Bye. So we've been talking with Julia DeGraw, Northwest Senior Organizer with Food and Water Watch, one of their uh, one of the major campaigns that Julie has Julia has been working on as a as an organizer has been this battle against Nestle's efforts to build bottled water plants in Cascade Locks and elsewhere throughout the Pacific Northwest. Uh, if you want to be involved, uh, contact Julia, uh, and her uh, email address is up on the screen. Thank you for watching. Let's keep working for people's future, not for a corporate future. I hope we'll see you again next week. Bye.